Now for the second talk of the networking session, uh, we have uh, Jose Alamos. Jose Alamos, uh, he's a maintainer and a contributor to Riot for a long time. He did a lot of work in the low level uh, networking side of things in Riot. He's driven currently the migration to the new radio hardware abstraction layer for 15.4 radios. And uh, he also wrote the Lura one implementation that we have uh, in Riot. He's going to talk today about uh, the usage of 15.4 DSME Mac uh, on top of Lura radios, which allows him to overcome the problem of going through a gateway uh, and achieving some time to client communication using long range uh, radios and leveraging a lot of the Mac uh, access from 15.04. Okay, uh, hello everybody. My name is uh, Jose Alamos. I'm a PhD student yeah. at the Humber University of Applied Science and the uh, Free University of Berlin. And I will do my talk, DSME LoRa, where we assess the 15.4 DSME E over LoRa. Sorry, I have some echo here, so I have to. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So. Uh, for the agenda, I will start with a problem statement. Why do we want to assess the SME over LoRa? I will need to talk a little bit about the DSME background. Uh, then I will explain the DSME LoRa mappings we propose. We have an implementation on Riot. We also did some evaluation, so I will explain the experiment setup, the evaluation itself, the, all the results we got from, from DSME over LoRa. I will have also some words on large scale DSME LoRa and the conclusional outlook of this work. So, to start, I think a, a bit of background of LoRa will be good. So LoRa is a narrowband chip spread spectrum wireless modulation that is very nice because it supports long range transmission up to 15 kilometers and even more with low power. Uh, although it, uh, it usually has a very low throughput in the order of mm. five per second. And it also has a very long uh, transmission time on error. On top of that, there's LoRa one, which is a cloud-based Mac for LoRa. Yeah. And the idea of LoRaWAN is that the end devices uh, exchange data with gateways, and this gateway is planned to forward the, the network servers, which uh, finally deploy the data in the in application servers where the end application of the user lives. And it's also possible to send data back from the application server following a downlink and get to the to the end node. So it's possible to enable the right communication between end nodes and applications in the cloud. However, LoRa one comes with, uh, with its own limitations on one side because of the uh, regional uh, regulations. For instance, in Europe, we can only transmit 1% of an observation period, 1% of time in an observation period for, of one hour. It means that in practice, we cannot transmit more than 36 seconds of time on air in an hour. And since the gateways are shared infrastructure between all LoRa one applications, this means that uh, we would basically run out of duty cycles if all applications have downlinks. In practice, network servers tend to limit the, um, the downlink of, uh, of the LoRaWAN network. Uh, sometimes in the case of the Things Network, it could be up to 10 packets per node per day, which for most control scenarios is really not an option. On the other side, there's no peer-to-peer -peer communication. So basically, if we have a sensor here that Required to send data to an actuator. The only way to do that is sending the data all the way through the gateways to the network server, which will be deployed in the application server. And then we need to send all the data back to the node, which basically hinders any kind of edge computing and can be very expensive if uh, we have a big network, network with many nodes that transmit uh, to a server. And on the other side, it requires a permanent infrastructure back on the gateways. And what happens many times is that these gateways might also have a cellular link, especially when they are deployed in, in rural areas. And what happens if, if there's intermittent connectivity in these gateways, then the LoRa1 network renders useless because it cannot transmit data. So the whole LoRa1 network is broken. So because of these limitations, LoRa1 is not suitable for many IoT control scenarios. Uh, what about 15.4? Uh, 15.4 is well known. It's known to be flexible. Uh, it supports uh, multiple topologies, cluster tree, peer-to-peer, -peer, and it's also it, it's also it also supports different transmission patterns. It charges low-power devices. The communication is reliable, 
but Lora is not supported. So in case we can somehow run 15.4 over, over Lora, can 15.4 overcome uh, this Lora one limitation to enable direct and reliable peer-to-peer -peer communication? That's what we're going to figure out now. But first, I would like to talk a little bit about DSME, which is one of the operation mode of 15.4, which is special interest for us. This one was introduced uh, in the 2012 amendment. 15.4 E was introduced simultaneously with TISH. And uh, the idea is like similar to TISH, it also supports uh, time slot channel hopping, like multi channel time slot transmission, but also supports CSMA CA transmission. It supports out of the box mesh and peer to peer communication. And it also, compared to in contrast to, tree, to TISH, it managed uh, slot allocation natively. So basically it can handshake between the different nodes and this is all handled by the Mac layer, which makes it quite uh, flexible. Because of this, we propose DSME as an alternative Mac for LoRa. In order to understand how this works, basically a PAN coordinator defines a super frame structure. This super frame structure uh, basically repeats uh, indefinitely. A super frame is a beacon slot, a contention access period and a contention free period. We will see what this means. The beacon slots are used for synchronization. A pack coordinator start emitting beacons at a beacon interval. Other devices that want to join the, the network will listen for, uh, to these beacons and will synchronize to this super frame structure. And the reason why we have a beacon interval, which is uh, configurable, is because other devices could also join the network become coordinators, but they can transmit in other, in other slots. So basically we don't have beacon collisions, which we used to have on, on standard 15.4. During the contention access period, we can do CSMA CA transmission for unicast or broadcast packets, as well as uh, Mac commands. And during the guarantee, uh, during the contention free period, we have a uh, guaranteed time slots, similar to TISH. Here we can basically allocate a collision free uh, unique time frequency time frequency slot, uh, which is basically like the it's exactly the same like Tish, but basically just a, a section of the um, of the super frame. And each one of the super frames has uh, seven guaranteed time slots, each one multi-channel, of course, but seven is not enough for many applications. So this standard allows to merge super frames into multi super frames, which is also configurable. So we can trade off transmission latency with a number of, uh, of uh, guaranteed time slots. So uh, let's proceed with the, the similar mapping to see how we can run the SME on top of LoRa. For that, we essentially need two things. On one side, we need to map the phi. For that, we need to convert the 15.4 frames or somehow transmit them into LoRa frames. For that, we simply transmit the, the full frame into the phi payload of LoRa. We need to map the 15 to 4 channels into a definition of LoRa channels. LoRa channels actually don't exist. LoRa 1 have their own definition for channels. So we needed to define 16 channels using typical LoRa 1 setting. And on the other side, the CSMA, uh, CA algorithm requires uh, clear channel assessment, which is not supported with, uh, on, on, by default in LoRa. But what we do is we map this to a feature that's common in all LoRa radios called the channel activity detection, which is used for detecting LoRa preambles. But there are some papers that show that it can be used just for detecting the, the presence of a LoRa, LoRa packet with less accuracy than detecting the preamble, but it can still be used. So basically we map directly to channel activity detection. And on the other side, we need to map the, the Mac uh, the standard multi super frame duration in, in DSME for OQPSK radios like the one, like the typical 2.4 gigahertz transceivers is in the order of uh, 122 milliseconds, which of course is not enough for transmitting a full LoRa frame, which can take up to seconds. So we need to expand the, um, the super frame duration. So for that, we define a symbol time of one millisecond, which is in order of the symbol time for the LoRa configuration we use in our channels. And with that, uh, basically, in the configuration of one super frame per multi super frame, we get a multi super frame duration of 7.68 seconds, uh, which renders uh, seven guaranteed time slots because it's only one, one super frame. 
This multi superframe order maps to the number of superframe per multi superframe. If we increase this value, we double the number of superframes. So here, uh, with multi superframe order four, we have two superframes per multi superframe. So 14 guaranteed time slots uh, with five, 28, and so on. And of course, this increases the superframe duration, the multi superframe duration, because we are adding more superframes per multi superframe. So let's see the implementation in Riot. Uh, for the implementation of DSME, we use Open DSME, which is an open source implementation of DSME. We integrated it into the GNRC network stack. So for that, we create a, a GNRC net if for DSME, which controls a Mac layer, also controls the location of slots, and uh, allows to exchange messages between GNRC and the Mac layer. We implement the, the message uh, abstraction layer of DSME using the GNRC packet buffer, so we can reuse memory here and keep the implementation slim. And we implement the platform layer using the high-level timer API of Riot. And we use the 15.4 radio hall, which is an API we introduced like a couple of years ago for 15.4 radios. And uh, the advantage of this is that basically with minor modifications, we can just run DSME over standard 15.4 radio. But what we do, what we do here is that we implemented a LoRa driver, which is compatible with the 15.4 radio hall, which has the DSME LoRa mappings. But basically, just with minor compile settings, we can still run standard DSME in it, which makes it convenient. So let's check the experiment setup. Uh, for the evaluation environment, we set up a single hop peer to peer network on IoT Lab. This uh, network has source devices and sync devices. These sources transmit 16 bytes uh, of payload to async at an exponential rate. We allocate one guarantee time slot per device uh, during bootstrap. And uh, for the experiment, we just configure one super frame per multi super frame, which gives us seven guarantee time slots. Uh, each one with 16 with 16 channels and 7.68 uh, seconds of multi super frame duration. Let's check the evaluation. First, the memory requirements. We evaluate this on the BL072 LoRaWAN 1 platform, which is the same one we use in the tutorial today in the morning. It's uh, essentially an STM32 L0. It has 256 kilobyte of ROM and 20 kilobyte of RAM. And the total consumption is uh, around 108 kilobyte of ROM and uh, 12 kilobyte of RAM for the basic support with, with the GNRC interface. Around 60% of that of the ROM and 65% of the RAM is open DSME. In case of the LoRa driver, since the new interface uh, maps directly to the semantics of, uh, of a 15 to 4 device, the mapping to the LoRa driver is almost one to one and we don't need to declare any state. So that's why basically we leave most of the state uh, to the Mac layer, and then we get a very slim uh, LoRa driver. And uh, here we have the results of the of data transmission, first uh, using CSMACA. This graph here show the cumulative density function of the, um, of the transmission delays, and we normalize it with the packet reception ratio. So we show it here on, on the right axis on, on each side. And uh, we also put next to these numbers, the value of uh, the results of the simulation environment, a nominal plus plus uh, simulation environment, also using open DSME, which uh, because of the time, we want to go that much into the details, but uh, basically it's also using open DSME and a, a LoRa radio model. And we can learn some stuff from these experiments. Uh, first thing is that the simulations and the, and the experiment results tend to converge. Second, that when we increase the um, when we increase the number of nodes on the on a fixed transmission interval, then we increase the transmission delay and reduce the packet reception radio. The reduction of the packet reception radio is more clear here on the on the right channel, on on the right um, uh, figure. What is happening here is that we are transmitting using CSMACA in a common channel. So of course, if we increase the number of nodes or we reduce the transmission interval, what we're doing is adding more traffic to the air, which, uh, which happens that we will get more collisions, we will get more retransmissions, and we will also get some channel failures uh, try trying to access the channels. So of course, this degrades the packet reception ratio and increases the, um, increases the transmission delay. 
So we can summarize that, adding more nodes and decreasing the transmission interval during CSM ACA transmission, increase the transmission delay and decrease the packet reception rate. On the other side, for guarantee time slot transmission, we see that they also converge with the simulation. And what we see here is that when we vary the number of nodes, we get no difference in packet reception ratio, nor, uh, nor uh, time to, uh, nor uh, transmission delay. The reason for that is because all nodes allocate one slot per multi super frame. So that means that essentially as long as we allocate enough GTS resources, we can send, every node can send once in a multi super frame structure. So if we add more nodes to the network, we're just allocating more slots, but all these transmissions are collision free because we have slots. What happens when we decrease the transmission interval, what we can see here is that basically the packet reception rate gets around the 65% and the transmission delay uh, gets very poor. But basically what we are doing here is that the transmission, uh, the throughput of the, of the Mac is the same because we are transmitting in this case once every multi super frame. And when we decrease the transmission delay, basically what we are doing is scheduling faster and we add the stretch to the Mac queue, which increases the Mac queue length and therefore the transmission, the transmission delay. What happens in this case with five seconds is that basically we are scheduling faster than the multi super frame duration. So we are scheduling faster than what the Mac layer can send. So basically we are just like generating an artificial over overflow. And this is why we, we lose the, where we have this uh, packet losses here. But it's interesting to see that basically increasing the number of nodes doesn't change at all the, the packet reception region or the transmission delay. So, which is what we learned, basically a smaller transmission interval, increasing the transmission delay, but in cases when there is no queue overflow, there is 0% of packet losses. Regarding the energy consumption, we, we evaluate this uh, for the same platform. We assume uh, that the device is connected to a battery of 2,800 uh, million pairs which is like an alkaline, a typical alkaline battery. And uh, basically what we learn from here, uh, also it's important to mention that this device is transmitting every 15 minutes. And we, we also turn off the transceiver during, during the contention access period, which is uh, possible. The standard allows you to do that. And it can be done for instance, when this slot allocation already took place. And in the case when we use one super frame per multi super frame, so multi super frame or three, we get a lifetime of around two years uh, and a delay of around uh, half of the multi super frame duration, around three seconds. If we are okay with the transmission delay, we can increase the multi super frame order to get more super frames for multi super frame, and then we get a higher delay, but we can get the power consumption up to three years. This is without any further optimization. So of course, there are many stuff that can be done on open DSME, but still with the current state, we can get roughly three years. At the conclusion of this, this is uh, not like LoRa one, which in a similar situation with many assumptions probably, but it could be possible to have a LoRa one application running for eight or 10 years. In this case, uh, yeah, of course we, we cannot get to 10 years as it is now, but it's still suitable for battery powered applications. And since we could already validate the simulation environment, uh, we also run some, some large scale deployments on the simulator. And we see what happens first with CSM ACA. What we learn with this transmission is that uh, basically if we have a transmission interval that is not so, not so short and we have a hundred of nodes, we can get more than 90% of packet losses. But as soon as we increase the number of nodes, let's say to 300, then we get a packet reception ratio of around 30%. And if we reduce the transmission interval, it's even worse, we get around 14% of packet reception ratio uh, with a short interval and 300 nodes. So we learn from these results that CSM ACA transmissions are not suitable for large scale deployment. But on the other side, if we increase the, super the number of super frames per multi super frame, we can allocate more, more slots for every node. And we get the same results we learned from the previous experiment. Basically, if we, if, we, if we increase the number of nodes, we do not vary the packet reception ratio nor the transmission delay. We get virtually 100% of packet reception ratio, so 0% packet loss. 
And also when we reduce the transmission interval, in this case, we are transmitting faster than the super frame, than the multi-super frame duration. So we still get to 100%, although I had to cut the graph here because it's, uh, it, it takes some time to converge. But basically for 300 network, for 300 nodes, we can, we can basically get a, a working network with 100% packet reception rate. Which the conclusion that given that enough uh, slot resources, as we confirmed before, the guaranteed and slot transmission renders 100% of packet reception radio. So uh, we learned from this work that DSM Miller enables reliable long range peer to peer communication. Uh, it's also suitable for large network and battery powered applications. For the future work, we would like to run IPv6 over DSM Miller. For that, we would like to adapt concepts by the IETF Sixers group, which would also enable to run standard IP over, over OQPSK transceivers on DSME. So we could basically add support for the current uh, radios in, in Riot. At this work, uh, make three publications, a poster, a work in progress paper, and the last one is a journal that has a much more detailed uh, version of, the, of this presentation. If you're really interested in this work, feel free to, to give it a look. We really go with details and try to evaluate all aspects of the Mac layer. And we fully support reproducible research and open source software. So please feel free to get the source code of the simulation environment of the Riot OS implement of the Riot implementation of DSME, as well as the, as the simulation results and experiment results. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jose. And uh, now we have time for some questions. Questions here remotely. Wait a second. Great. Thank you. No one? Yeah, Akshay? No, that, there was a. There we go. Oh. So with the simulations conducted uh, with the assumption that we will use 1% of the duty cycle, I mean. Yes, yes. I mean, the thing with the duty cycle is uh, all the transmission options we use here, respect the duty cycle on, on the node basis. For instance, with the, we use spraying factor seven and bandwidth 125. So basically the nodes are compliant with the duty cycle. Usually the problem is the compliance with the gateways, because for instance, if you have downlink, you have a few gateways that have to address all, all nodes. And for the topology choice we're using, basically we are we are also like compliant with the duty cycle. Yeah, but it's, uh, but also it's all on single channel right now, right? No, it's multi-channel. Multi-channel as well. Yes, oh, cool. multi-channel. I mean, I mean the, the gateways, can be single, in this case, are single channel because uh, you transmit on, on different slots on different channels. So yeah, you basically, you, you don't have simultaneous uh, reception on, on different channels like a standard LoRa one gateway. Yeah. I was also wondering about like the duty cycle channel and like root appear, so that's fine. Yeah, um, I don't know if you mentioned that, but uh, now DSME, uh, the open DSME is moving to Riot, right? In ah, yes, yes. Actually, yeah, this uh, project started actually in the um, Seoul Harbor. Uh, and since the PhD students already finished uh, their PhD, basically nobody's maintaining open DSME anymore. And they asked us if we could basically just take it. And that's what we did. So basically now open DSME is uh, in the Riot uh, in the Riot OS organization, and we plan to keep working on it. And we are already working on the integration to Riot. It already shows very nice results. It's comparable to, to Tish. So I guess that's good news. Okay, thank you. And let's uh, thank Jose again.